Hey YouTube, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. In this video, we're going to talk about compound fractures. Now, compound fractures can look pretty gnarly, like this video I'm getting ready to show you. I got tagged on Instagram. I appreciate you guys tagging me on these videos because it's great content for me to use. But they look pretty gnarly, and they're distracting injuries. Typically, they're not life-threatening, but they can be super painful. Uh, but let's take a look at this example. I'm going to put a warning up. Uh, it's pretty, pretty gross looking. Uh, and then we'll talk about how to treat it, things like that. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> All right, so what do you guys think? Yeah, pretty gross. Anytime you see like a U shape in someone's arm or a leg, it's pretty gross. These are what we typically call distracting injuries because you're like, oh my gosh, that looks terrible. And sometimes we miss other life-threatening injuries because of this nasty looking arm or a leg. So a compound fracture is when we have two or more bones broken in the same compartment area. So this could be like a radius ulna in the arm or a tip fib down in the lower leg. Both those bones are broken and now the extremity is just moving on its own. So if you do come across someone who has a fracture like this, there's a few things we can do to kind of make their life a little easier, a little less painful. Uh, they need some pain meds, they need some good pain meds. Uh, but there's some things we can do uh, pre-hospital that's gonna make a big difference for them. Number one is let's stabilize the injury. If they're moving around, that means the two bones are touching together and there's nerve endings there. So that's gonna be extremely painful for these patients. So stabilize it. Make it look normal, okay? So when you kind of hold it, you don't really want to pull like a lot of traction, but kind of pull it just a little bit and make it look normal. Now, when I say pull it just a little bit, I'm not talking about like a femur fracture where you have to pull a lot. You're just kind of stabilizing it, hold it in place, let that foot kind of ride up and down, and let's just hold it right there. This is going to stop the bones from touching, and this is going to take the pain level from like a 10, maybe down to an 8. We also need to double check pulse motor sensory past that fracture because if we don't have pulse motor sensory past there they're not getting good blood flow and now the extremity is dying uh, past the injury so we need to take the socks and the shoes off here let's remove them and then check for pulse motor sensory on top of the foot you know hey can you move your toes for me you're going to feel a pulse right on top of the foot there and do you feel me touching if they have all three of these that means that they have good circulation past the injury and that is good if they do not have pulse motor sensory past the extremity, we may need to pull a little bit more and make it look a little more upright, a little better in a natural position to see if we can get blood flow back into the rest of the extremity. Now that we have it pulled in place and we're kind of stabilizing it where we're at, we need to think about splinting this injury. So any way you want to splint this. So when it comes to splinting, pretty much anything will work. It's like a puzzle, figure it out, but you need to stabilize before and after the injury. We could use this using a commercial splint, like a leg AOA, something like that. They make some really cool air splints. They're kind of expensive. But you could also use a sand splint or aluminum splint. You just kind of have to probably piece a few together. That way you can split the ankle and the knee at the same time. This is an example of the kind of splint that I carry in my backpack, and a lot of you do too. It's just a simple sand splint. It's an aluminum splint that you kind of fold and mold into a splint how you need it, but you probably gonna need like two of these to get the ankle and the knee, and you're gonna need some tape to secure it. Once we get our splint on, double check pulse motor sensory that you didn't take it away somehow by putting the splint on, and then we need to be transporting them to the hospital so we can get some x-rays. So I hope this video helps. You never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember the right gear and the right training. Also, if you're interested, we have brand new Medical Gear Outfitter hats down at medicalgearoutfitters.com if you're interested in buying one of these cool new hats.